Right from the opening title sequence, this game shows you exactly what you're in for. Part Van Helsing, part Wild Wild West, and part Superhero Story. If this sounds like a good time, then Evil West may be just the game for you. This new game from Flying Wild Hogs is exactly the kind of over-the-top action with some good humorous moments you would expect from the makers of the Shadow Warrior series. Set in an alternate universe Wild West where monsters and vampires called the Sanguisine are a constant threat to mankind. This threat has been fought back again and again by your character Jesse Rentier and the Rentier Institute. The story revolves around Jesse, an expert monster hunter raised and trained into life by his father, the leader of the Rentier Institute. In this world, the Rentier Institute is the establishment funded by the US government to hunt down monsters and keep people safe. The story isn't bad by any means, however it is straightforward without any large surprises or twists. This is a little bit of a breath of fresh air for me. In a market that can sometimes feel oversaturated with massive 100 plus hour games, with what feels like a million branching paths, sometimes having a straightforward 10 to 15 hour game like this allows you to just enjoy the narrative without feeling like you're being pulled in a million different directions. Speaking of narrative, most of the storytelling in this title is done through cutscenes, with more detailed lore scattered around as pickups through the various levels. While most cutscenes happen smoothly, there were several that seemed to jump cut very abruptly and felt out of place. Altogether, the supporting characters weren't especially memorable, but the overall narrative did feel like a complete package. And for those of you looking for replayability, while there are no alternate storylines, side quests, or any choices to be seen, there is a new game plus for you to carry your fully fleshed out arsenal into higher difficulty playthroughs. Speaking of your arsenal, there is plenty to say about the combat here. You begin with a relatively meek setup, comprised of a standard six shooter and the special Rentier Gauntlet, a set of brass knuckles on steroids made to demolish both barriers and monsters alike. While this may not seem like a lot of equipment at first, by the time the game is finished you'll be a walking armory, delivering death to the deathless with a flurry of lead, electricity, and skills. Speaking of skills, there is quite a bit of upgrades and skills at your disposal as well, ranging from adding electricity to most of your equipment to making your punches hit harder, faster, and wider, all the way to supercharging yourself to launch around the area in a flash of lightning. If there's a way to kill monsters, Jesse Rentier has probably perfected it. Now, as far as graphics and set design go, I will say this. This is an obviously stylized game. It does a great job of looking like what you think games used to look like. Bringing back the feeling of playing those mid to late PS3 era games that many of us grew up playing. I had several moments thinking back to the early Infamous titles, and those are some of the, my favorite games of the times. It truly feels stylistically that they grabbed that form of game and brought it to modern graphics without losing its core charm. There were a few times where creatures and set pieces in the background were stuttering as if at half speed, mostly when it was large groups of enemies or particle heavy effects such as fire or smoke. I only had one encounter near the end of the game that I experienced any actual performance issues with and I'm certain it was due to the loading of three of a certain enemy type with a particle heavy entrance. On to set design. This is one of the games that you can clearly tell every time you're about to be in combat. Whether it's environmental items to help fight enemies or just large open areas that lend themselves to this style of combat. You can always tell in an area if it is for exploration or traversal or if you're about to be ripping through some of the various monsters. With visceral sounds of strikes, gunfire, and brutal takedowns, the audio in this game truly harmonizes with the unobstructive but perfectly fitting background music that makes it always feel like it's high noon. Unfortunately, I do have to pick out one recurring audio glitch that happened after fighting a specific enemy type several times. This glitch happened if you killed an enemy during a beam attack that left a static electrical-like sound behind that lowered all audio sources and persisted through cutscenes and dialogue until death and reset. Other than this, all audio was clear and crisp. Overall, Evil West feels like a blast of superhero game nostalgia. A well-crafted, but at times hollow story has enough drive to make you want to come back and finish it. A visceral and genuinely fun combat system with numerous upgrades gives you plenty of ways to handle any given situation you may find yourself in. Some very well done set pieces that bring you the Wild West feeling without becoming stagnant or overdone, and audio that hits home as hard as Jesse's punches. In a time where it feels like every game must have a massive open world, 
branching storylines, or multiple different choices to become successful, Evil West helps show us that a well-crafted linear story can still be a lot of fun. I give Evil West an 8 out of 10. For Hardwired, I've been Alex Richardson, and if you've liked this video, please like and subscribe for more reviews and gaming news. Thanks for watching.